Yes, we did. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited about it. Thank you very much. So it's called Intuition, which I, you know, I want to get to the title of the album because normally there's a bit of a title track, but not in this case. So I find that a little interesting. <laughs> but first of all, I just wanted to know how long have you been hoping to put this out there? How long have you been holding on to this album with that little bit of different sound and wanting to do this? Oh, it's been, well, we started the album in August of 2020, and we finished it in sometime in December of 2020. So then I ended up turning it in when, when we kind of make, you know, had everything exactly the way we wanted it. Turned it in in February, um, first of February, and then just kind of been waiting to see what the record label wanted to do. I'm, I'm you know, I'm on Mercury Records and. And uh, they're they're country based, really country music. So when they hear this, they obviously are like, "Okay, this ain't this ain't country music." And uh, so I'm sure it was a little confusing. But as I communicated with them about it, of, of how the album came about and all that stuff, then they understood, and and then they helped me kind of put it around the world now. So it's it's been exciting. So you've been sitting on this secret for a while. <laughs> for a while, yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, it's got to feel good that it's out there. So then you said you told your record label a story about why you wanted to put this album out there. What is the story? Yeah, I mean, meaning like um, why, it's, you know, I'm, I know it's not what they were probably expecting. But uh, the thing was, I, I, I ran into a, a guy named Rob Prasad who produced and uh, wrote the songs with me on this album. Um, he played all the music. He's just a great producer. And he, he actually worked on something that I did out in LA one time, but I didn't meet him. I didn't, and I didn't know that was him that actually produced these tracks on this song that I wrote and, and mixed it. And when I found that out, I started seeking him out. Um, cause I wanted to work with him again. And, uh, it took me like three years to finally track him down. Cause like I said, he was from London, living in LA. Then he moved to Nashville and nobody knew him. Nobody like who's Rob. And, Anyway, I finally got a hold of him. We wrote a song over the phone and uh, basically text is what I mean. And then uh, when he sent me the final like track of what he had done of a song that I had kind of sent him that I wrote in Key West, I was still about a week out of leaving Key West. But I started thinking, man, I got to go meet this guy in Nashville. I, I'm, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to call him right now and see if he'd be up for meeting. So I drove to Key, I mean, drove to Nashville that next morning and met up with Rob and we started writing songs and that's how this album came about. Like I said, he's from London, England on the pop side and I didn't care. I wasn't, you know, we're not in a box. So I, I just thought we'd just turn in the way it sounds, you know, it don't matter. I love it. Well, first of all, your fans are already eating it up because there's still, there's still Billy Currington uh, through and through. There is your style, your sound, your vibes, but then just with a bit of a pop twist and element on a lot of these. Oh yeah, thank you. And that's what I like. Obviously you got influence uh, from this producer, but I mean, uh, what was the, oh, Get Close has a little bit of MJ vibes to me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He, um, one morning I showed up at his house cause I was, when I would go, I went to Nashville like four different times and one morning, um, I showed up at his house and he's like, man, I got something funky I did last night. And it was, of course, get close and didn't really have any lyrics to it or anything like that. And, and I just listened to it a few times and all of a sudden we just started writing lyrics to it. And when we were done, he was like, man, I grew up with this bass, funky bass player in London. Why not send this track to him and let him put some funky bass on it? So it just kept getting funkier and funkier and, and, uh, when I heard when it came back and I heard that, I was like, oh man, this this is an amazing sound. So I was excited about that. And, and then we just kept going from there. But that's how that came about. That's what I love about it. Again, it has all these things. I mean, there is just a dead sexy track distraction, is that's just that's just <laughs> sex in <and> music. <laughs> <laughs> that was why I was like, hmm. I don't know about this one. <laughs> that's just the way it came out. <laughs> One of them one night stand songs, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is the thing. This album has a lot of songs about love, 
and honesty, to be completely frank. And yeah. so I'm, I'm assuming that there was some intuition there that where you were just like, we just got to follow the feelings that we're going with here. And that's exactly how that album title came about. What you just said is what we were talking about. Like, you know, what are what's people going to think and what, you know, do we have everything we wanted to say on this project? And, you know, we mentioned the word intuition and that's, that's like, okay, there's, there's the title right there of the album. But yeah, that's what we did. Okay. So how many ladies are these songs written about? <laughs> well, let's see about four or five. <laughs> Cause there's definitely heartbreak in there. Mm -hmm. Coming out of that mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, sharing so many feelings and songs that I had kind of written on my phone, you know, and I would share them with Rob that had happened during that time. And, and uh, that's kind of how the sad, sad songs came about through that past relationship. But then as the healing process was happening, going to Nashville, I was meeting new people and met a couple girls that I was, I think I was falling in love with and wanted to see again. And, you know, it's just, it was all over. I was all over the place emotionally. Well, but that's, that's how you write good damn music. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. That's how they, that's how they made their way on that album through the, through the heartbreaks and the love. Yeah. Well, again, it's, it's really got all the different kind of vibes and feels because then you also are somebody who is very playful. We're known for kind of these playful songs as well. And that's where, you know, I think, you kind of get those fun island vibes on moments. Oh yeah, yeah. And the, when I Rob was the one that kind of one night when I left, he started messing around with that and whistling, and he sent it to me over the phone. He's like, "What do you think about getting on this tomorrow?" And I just instantly heard heard the whistle, and I was like, "I'm gonna come help you whistle on that tomorrow, and we're gonna we're gonna finish that one." So, yeah, definitely coming from the island feel. You're right. Yeah. So then are you excited to perform these live? You're such a fun performer as is, or are you a little bit, this is going to be different on stage. How do you do these? Right? Yeah. You know, definitely going to see you cause you can tell by numbers what songs are reacting the most with your fans and what do you think they're going to want to hear? So kind of look at that and, and then take three or four or five maybe and work them up with the band and just play them, see how they go. Yeah. Like especially like Get Close, that funky song. I definitely want to play that live. I want to play a song called Deja Vu. I yes. love love that feel. Yeah. And uh, who knows after that? Just see what, what, what one comes. So are there plans for the future to tour with this album? Or am I too far ahead of myself? Because, I mean, this album just was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Us. No, I mean, it's all, all along. It was um, when I turned it in, I, I, I requested or my wishes were I wanted this to, to go everywhere all over the world global and um so that's what they did they placed it everywhere and uh so we're, we're looking at a, like whatever you call a world tour however many countries you can fit in that that's what we're looking at right now for next year you know and also it's depending on who who's allowing shows and right. what country's not whatever so we have to deal with that too but we definitely have plans to, to hit the road worldwide all right. Well, when uh, Canada allows you here, I'm requesting distraction, just putting it out there. So oh, I am <laughs> definitely going to play that. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you think. <laughs> no, you don't. What are you talking about? Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about a couple other things, too. I know you've got a few of these to do. So just really quickly, clearly you found some music and went through just a little bit of a different sound to enjoy uh, what you do best during the downtime of COVID. I'd like to also assume that when I, if I'm going to ask you what you got up to during a pandemic, you likely um, were on a surfboard <laughs> because. <laughs> That's, you're right about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Mostly, mostly any, any morning that the ocean provided waves, I was out there. Yeah. And, uh, definitely a, a good place to heal from. You know, like I said, going through breakups, breakup, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm not going to single no one person out, but, you know, might have came out of something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, surf between surfing and going to hang out with Rob and going out to Key West and doing some fishing, 
that was my three main things that I did. Yeah, so, well, that seawater is good for the curls. I know that, so. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yes, it's, it's an amazing place to be. So I actually had uh, a friend that works with us. It's a big fan of yours. She said, you got to ask him if he's coming up with a sunscreen deal or something that'll be sold at the merch tent soon. Because all you do is spend time in the sun. So <laughs> yeah. I got something for you. I've never in my life that I recall, maybe as a small kid, but I've never wore sunscreen. What? Never. Oh, I don't know if we're allowed to advertise that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it's a big thing to people, and I know they feel they need it and whatever, and I'm glad. But for me, it was something I just, I don't like, you know, I don't put stuff on my – I just never did it, never liked it. You just live in the wild side. You just go for it. Live life, and that's it. That's right. Just stay natural as possible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then quickly, just while we're wrapping up the kind of summer vibes and those feelings as well, I know we're getting closer to football season. You're a huge football fan. Wondering what your kind of routine is when you're settling down to watch a big game. You know what? I, honestly, this this time of my life and just past few years, I hadn't watched a lot of football, even though I love it more than anything. But when I do get a chance, I want to go to the game versus watching it on TV. I want I want to be there. And being from Georgia, the Bulldogs, you know, I'm a fan as a kid and still a fan today. Any chance I can see them, I'll be there. Yeah. Awesome. Billy, I am so grateful for your time and I'm so excited for others to hear this album. Uh, I really am one of those people that I even told the label this. Uh, it's hard for me to sit down and not talk about every individual song. Um, so I have already listened to it on repeat a few times. Thank so you. Uh, I think it's really cool. It's definitely different, but it's still got you in there 100% through and through every song you can feel that you've just really created a different vibe and combined uh, two different loves here together. So uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate you talking to me.